नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यू आर वाचिंग आवर शो पर्सपेक्टिव वेर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस ऑफ की नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इश्यूज टुडे वी गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द ड्राफ्ट इंडियन टेलीकम्युनिकेशन बिल 2022 नाउ द गवर्नमेंट हैज पुट दिस ड्राफ्ट बिल इन पब्लिक डोमेन फॉर सजेशंस एंड फीडबैक नाउ द प्रपोज्ड बिल एम्स टू ब्रिंग स्वीपिंग चेंजेस टू हाउ द टेलीकॉम सेक्टर is governed it seeks to replace three laws the indian telegraph act 1885 the indian wireless telegraphy act 1933 and the telegraph wires unlawful possession act 1950 now the public and all stakeholders can send their comments uh, to the authorities by 20th of october this year the draft bill uh, uh, takes into consideration the need for a new legal framework that is future ready in fact ott and communication apps such as whatsapp signal telegram and others that may provide voice or video calling would fall under the ambit of this bill but through a light touch regulation it also provides for an enabling framework to facilitate innovation and technological development in telecommunication sector the draft bill also enables a legal framework for preventing harassment of users from unsolicited calls and messages in today's show we'll discuss and analyze uh, various aspects of this uh, draft bill and try and understand uh, the importance and significance and uh, the future impact as well uh, on the telecom sector and on the users as well for more on this we're joined by a distinguished panel of experts let me first uh, introduce them to you beginning with we have with us in the studio mr rakesh kumar uh, patnagar he's a former advisor with the department of telecommunications welcome mr patnagar he served in various capacities uh, in the telecom uh, sector we're also joined by mr jitain jain cyber security expert uh, and sandeep agarwal uh, the chairman of uh, telecom committee at uh, phd chambers of commerce is also with us welcome both of you gentlemen also let me begin with you mr patnagar and let's start by answering two basic fundamental questions one why make those changes in the existing telecom regulatory or telecom governing system also what does this bill entail some points i have mentioned but what are the key highlights you see as you indicated right in the beginning as far as the earlier laws were concerned you see they they starting from 1885 and uh, all, almost uh, uh, 140 years have passed in 1885 no one would have thought about uh, uh, the type of the telephony we are having the digital connectivity which we are having no one would have thought of but the good point is even that whatever was was framed by the authorities at that time it has uh, uh, stood it has re- re- continued to provide the required set of the support now i am quite hopeful that with the new telecom bill coming up whatever deficiencies whatever shortfalls were there that definitely uh, they will be uh, getting removed but only for today over a period of time after a lapse of 5 years after a lapse of 10 years you will find that again possibly will be uh, will be at a stage where more changes may be required in the earlier decades earlier uh, the the type of the changes which are taking place in the telecom networks were not uh, uh, as rapid as would has happened in the last Three decades. Mm-hmm. Telegram was still functional till the till the late nineties. Uh, it was only in late nineties uh, that telegram, telegram services uh, practically uh, became withdrawn from India and all other countries also across the world. That they continued for more more than a hundred years, hundred uh, plus years. But now we are moving from two G to three G to four G to five G, and we are already planning to go to six G. in other 5 6 years people have already started working the type of the changes which we had uh, as for the level of the competition there is concerned you see earlier the government used to be the only service provider now multiple players are there and the type of the services also are going to multiply earlier it used to be voice then it became voice and data then voice and uh, data that also being uh, uh, multiple routes like whatsapp and uh, uh other type of ott applications that also came into picture mm-hmm. so what we are framing the rules of what, what we are trained to frame today they are going to be based on the reality of of today okay but after 10 years uh, you will find that we will have more set of the uh, variables will be there and more set of the requirements will be there uh, as for the vision of the uh, drafter of the bill are concerned you see they are trying to Uh, frame a bill so that it can continue for many many more years okay but eventually there may be a need for revision need for amendments 
over a, uh, just after a decade or two. Okay. That is it, going to happen. In fact, yeah, that, that, that is something which might be required because uh, uh, this is a technology which is changing at a very fast pace there. Jitain, I'd like to bring you in here, you know, as uh, uh, Mr. Bhatnagar was also referring to, and uh, uh, the bill, uh, uh, the consultation paper on the bill also spoke about how uh, this, this law has to be future ready. Uh, when we're talking about future ready, of course, uh, there are a lot of aspects which need to be taken into consideration with its technology, with its services. Uh, and then one of the aspects is uh, the, the OTT players and, uh, you know, communication services as well falling in the ambit. But a light touch. Now, what is a light touch here? See, we have to look at this entire draft bill from the three perspectives. One, government has finally decided that it is time to do away with this amendment in uh, you know 100 year old law that you bring keep bringing amendments and try to fix something which doesn't work for these future technologies so they have finally decided to bite the bullet and bring in a new law which is i don't know if future ready but at least at least it's present ready so it not only talks about 5g but it's also preparing the country for the 6g revolution that's number one second this law i mean for the first time we are seeing a bill which is uh, uh, has a lot of simplicity in the terms of language it's not very complicated it's it's very easy for a common man to understand uh, uh, and understand the purpose and objective of the law. So you talk, and they have used a lot of illustrations uh, for use of email, you know, using email as a word itself. You look at Telegraph Act, it is something like computer to computer, machine to machine communications and all those things. But now you are using terminologies with illustrations. And three, I mean, apart from making the country future ready, you're trying to fix a lot of problems in the society, a problem of spam calls, frauds, OTP frauds, this and that. So a small provision like that, uh, a customer will have a right to know the uh, identity of the person who is calling him. So this will bring an end to all the spam calls you get whole day, these fraudulent calls you get for OTP frauds. This will bring a complete end to this menace which is you know, spreading in our digital society. Third, Bill is also realizing that in this digital world where India is standing in the dawn of digital age, we have to differentiate that we regulate the technology sector by light touch regulations. For example, I think now email services or these uh, you know telephony services from uh, app service providers like WhatsApp and all, which do not have a server in India, which are foreign companies, which do not have an infra. You can just get a mobile phone on a computer and start making this you know uh, telecom calls. Okay. So you know, and you can't compare those things with the traditional telecom service providers. So instead of getting these apps into license, Raj and red tape bureaucracy, government has decided that we'll follow certain guidelines, we'll recommend certain guidelines, we'll uh, frame the rules. You just follow the rules, do the self-compliance, and just regulate yourself, maybe in the terms of self-regulation from industry or by government or some, you know, fully private partnership-based societies. But in a way that it should not become a bottleneck for the working of these companies, it should be for the convenience of the society. So in that context, this light touch regulations are planned. I mean, you saw this in the case of this uh, OTT news web uh, and uh, news websites also, that government asked that, okay, fine, if you're running a news portal, just register yourself over there and tell us the name of the person who's running the portal. Okay. It did not mean that you have to get any license or you have to get any approval, just inform the government. So this is light touch regulation. For OTT apps also, they said previously that, okay, you form an industry consortium, you ensure that, you know, um, you show the right content based on ages and all. Government now has decided that it will not step in or intervene unless and until the self-regulation fails. Okay. But at the same time, they do not want to have a situation where there is a complete vacuum or absence of law, or there is, you know, complete uh, no protection of the rights of users, both in terms of data and rights. Okay. So this is, uh, in a way, the concept behind self-regulation regulation that you frame the rules, ask them to, uh, uh, you know, comply with them, but do not get into license fight and all. Okay. Third, government is also willing to now, for the first time, differentiate between innocent mistakes and willful breaking of law. So, I mean, uh, look at the, you know, this uh, wireless equipment, I mean, which are banned in India. I mean, we have seen in Delhi last 10 years that the quality of service of telecom networks are extremely poor. People have been putting mobile tower boosters in their private homes. And a lot of times you'll hear that, you know, somebody from DOT came and they find and they said, this is a banned equipment, how can you have it and all those things. I mean, in the new society, these wireless routers, telecom boosters are a common thing. But people were being harassed. So government is now saying that if suppose somebody has you know, uh, in a way, it's not in compliance of law. If it is a bona fide mistake or it is a genuine mistake, they will just compound it. Maybe put some penalty and that's it. 
you don't have to go to court and jail okay but if somebody is intentionally breaking the law using satellite phone in border areas for you know communication and all those things trespassing and all those things then the uh, iron hand of law will come okay so now law in a way will differentiate between genuine mistakes and willful breaking of law okay and okay. last point i want to say for the first time government is very clear that we will bring in a law which which aids the startup ecosystem which facilitates the you know innovation of technologies which serves the society not just the government and the you know this uh, the unmindful thinking of law and for that lot of consultations will take place so government is very clear this is a draft bill and we will do lot of consultations so that everybody every stakeholder of society is on the same page and we bring in a law which will serve for the next 100 years of our society if not 100 years at least 20 years of our society okay okay indeed and that is uh, pretty much required consulting all stakeholders that process is something which has been going on for quite some time uh, let's also you know uh, bring in uh, mr sandeep agarwal here mr agarwal uh, from the industry's perspective you know uh, this becomes really important and by industry there are various uh, you know uh, sub sectors within the telecom sector as well uh, when we are talking about uh, telecom service providers or ott players or communication service providers as well uh, so what's the overall general view from the industry of course uh, all the stakeholders uh, would have been consulted and they have another opportunity to go ahead and you know send in their suggestions as well till 20th of october but what's the overall view with uh, with uh, these new draft uh, uh, you know regulations so first as you rightly said it is a draft so everybody is being consulted so i don't believe that anybody is too much worried yes uh, the it sector the ott players are a bit worried now if somebody had a free reign <laughs> you know uh, obviously it needed some kind of uh, stoppage to that free reign and uh, people did need to know uh, that what is uh, who is calling them what kind of websites are there and uh, what kind of people you know are putting up those data on the net mm -hmm. so i don't think that uh, uh, companies like google or uh, facebook or whatsapp are really worried these people know the rules the laws and they i think once this system is in place and as you said rightly said the light touch thing that yes you know if somebody is calling you on whatsapp or calling you uh, giving you too many calls if the uh, the customer if a user is able to check who is behind him who is calling him then obviously people will be more ready to take up these ott platforms okay they are able to take whatsapp otherwise people are afraid of using whatsapp Uh, or even uh, using telecom they are forced to do it but they are afraid because every day even i am getting maybe 20 30 spam calls so with this kind of information available to me i can really put a stop to them okay half the time i am not able to know who is calling me so i can't do anything there are companies like uh, you know uh, what are these uh, Uh, who are able to give us information uh -huh. on um, uh, who is Proof calling them. me Proof yeah them. but yeah but but those those uh, people are not official so we cannot really depend on them true caller and others so really it is important that we have the right kind of information okay. the government is taking the right kind of route and we, on one side Uh, operators are giving huge amount of fees to the government which okay. is used for the development purpose indeed and on the other hand there is total anarchy there is no no control so i believe uh, balancing is the right thing and industry okay. i don't believe anybody is uh, you know feeling bad about this okay. we really look forward to this uh, act this law being made Okay. Okay. A A A S A P. Okay. Because okay. Because the whole industry believes that this is the right time. This eighteen eighty five Telegraph Act is too old to cover, and most of these uh, OTT players are facing the heat of many agencies because of the laws not being made uh, as per the uh, you know the current indeed situation. Indeed. So, so, so I believe so, everybody will. 
is happy and once the uh, bill comes into force everybody will be happy okay so the law has to keep up with the changing times as well that's the overall sentiment but enabling uh, both the consumers and uh, uh, you know the service providers as well mr patnagar you know coming back to the regulations part and you know as jitain was explaining earlier you also referred to it uh, light touch regulations and all that so <coughs> if we have to understand i'm sorry if you have to understand you know uh, what happens to the overall regulatory mechanism what happens to the uh, you know telecom regulatory authorities uh, powers and its uh, its ambit of its powers uh, what kind of changes do we see there you see <clears throat> as for the tri act also is concerned it was not linked directly to the uh, to the three acts which we are referring to tri act was a different so now you see as for the broad framework of the services are concerned that is going to be covered in the telecom uh, bill 2022 now as for the regulatory part is concerned uh, the regulators even now also if you try to see the regulatory positions two decades back a decade back and even now that also is dynamically changing it is not at the it is not static uh, some that also again varies from country to country some countries for example they they are uh, having the spectrum also completely with the regulator the licenses is also are with the regulator but in india it is slightly different so so the scenario may vary from country to country and dynamically as per the requirements uh, the regulatory powers also the regulatory uh, 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 requirements also they also will be changing even at present as was indicated a uh, regulatory a uh, light touch uh, regulation we are headed towards that direction mm -hmm. already many of the countries you see on uh, uh, many areas which are already being regulated sort of a self we are moving towards self regu uh, regulation so people are uh, laws are not uh, regulatory laws are not such that okay if something is required to be done you do something report back to the regulator and uh, re regulator expects that you are reporting ba back to the regulator faithfully okay so so it need not be uh, checking everything what whatever you you are doing there could have been a regime where what you are doing that is being very very closely being monitored and all that with a change of the time with the level of the competition those type of things are really not required and over a period of time the regulation is going to be becoming less and less of regulation mm -hmm. so as such the more, is, more more of putting in an enabling ecosystem yes in yes so in a way the regulatory framework is not going to be weakened the regulatory framework is going to be there it is going to support whatever is uh, is uh, is there in the bill and uh, many times the regulator is uh, acts as a sort of a advisory to the government as well okay because government refers to the regulator okay you study this and on the base of of that because uh, regulators also go go in for a consultation process they get the feedback for not only all stakeholders including service providers including consumers and the public in general and based on the uh, that they frame their recommendations send across to the government okay so in that case you see regulatory inputs are becomes very very important for the government to take a call okay okay jitin you know uh, one very important aspect here is uh, because we are talking about uh, a, a bill or a law or a draft bill you know which deals with the technology and that to digital technologies there is a lot of movement which happens in this in this world and uh, there in the key word is innovation so how does you know this this new draft uh, take a look or rather you know takes into consideration the innovation and development part as well because when we're talking about the enabling mechanism or enabling ecosystem uh, and you know those light touch regulations uh, all of them might come to a knot uh, if uh, you know uh, we're not uh, giving a bit of focus on innovation and development as well i mean uh, you see i'll give an example there is a concept of innovation sandbox where you could like experiment without going into this license regime and all i mean but if you take a overall generic example let's take the example of email now email would be under this bill will be a regulated service because it's a telecom service but that does not mean that a startup tomorrow which wants to provide an email service will have to go to the government file a form seek approval there will be cap on fdis they have to seek telecom license and all those no nothing will happen there might be generic regulations that you have to do a proper kyc you might have to store data for 2 years you have to comply with the law enforcement request that's it so the the law will not stifle the you know innovation at the same time i think it will be very interesting to watch that 
how this law will you know put an end to a lot of confrontations which has been happening between the technology sector especially the foreign companies and the government of india for example now we have seen that a lot of you know uh, fake calls coming from whatsapp from foreign numbers here and there duping people threatening people kidnap ransom calls coming in and then you send a law enforcement request to whatsapp they don't cooperate they don't provide you proper details and all those things but now uh, you know with this kyc regulations coming in place and a, you know a user having a right to know of the caller uh, identity how will whatsapp deal with those situations for, for long they have said that we will not trace messages we will not do this that so now i think it will be very interesting to watch that in these consultations where society will be empowered to protect themselves through the law how this technology companies will you know uh, uh, react to the law and provisions will be very very interesting to watch because you know you know what i am seeing in a way Though the government is trying to make the, the uh, law of futurity law, but okay. there is a great deal of emphasis on the uh, you know protection of the rights of users, their privacy, their safety. Okay, okay. So that'll be an interesting area to watch out for, as Jitain is pointing out. Uh, Sandeep, your views there on the innovation and and you know uh, research and development R and D part here, because uh, there 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 seems a lot of scope and and. Uh, if we see you know uh, uh, digital technologies changing by leaps and bounds uh, uh, you know every year or every uh, six months even so true actually you know uh, this uso fund was constraining the government from uh, funding uh, the development the research and development and uh, you know skill development and other aspects so basically you know it has become uh, it has become very important that Uh, this uh, draft bill is going to change it from only rural investment. USO fund could only be invested into the rural uh, areas. Now it can be done into pilot projects for new technologies. It can be used for urban areas, unserved urban areas also. It can be used for R and D also. So, so it has become quite wide ranging, mm -hmm. and that was the need of the hour. you know you know we need submarine cables to be put in along the coast but then according to the us of mandate the money could not be used okay so the development of high speed internet connectivity was actually being hampered because dot did not have the funds to invest okay into uh, putting in these kind of uh, high speed high uh, low latency uh lines okay but with the change this will be really possible okay so uh, i believe that uh, this will actually improve on the um development research and, and new projects coming up new projects and so innovation and then new players uh, new players you know they are uh, the smaller players, players even up. even not, not not only the larger uh, you know uh, players in the market but small companies also playing that very important part uh, what sandeep is saying quick final comment from you uh, mr bhatnagar as well on the innovation part on on uh, you know what uh, new entrepreneurs or innovators might come up with new ideas and then that changes uh, the entire game uh i would like to point out that uh, the the uh, the budget of the present uh, the, the current year which was presented it had two very important items 5% of the us of funding to be ut utilized for the uh, for the r&d in urban and uh, 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 even rural areas for new technologies and uh, second was the design led incentive scheme which was uh, early a modification of the production link incentive scheme okay so both these have brought in a, a new set of the players and uh, maybe in the next 15 days time c dot may be announcing uh, distribution of almost 400 uh, crores of uh, funding to the industry and uh, dci scheme another scheme uh, that also uh, covers the innovation part so they have already dispersed 50 crores of funding to 43 companies they have already done with this type of support coming in uh, we had a uh, we we had on 16 to 18th of uh, may at sanchar bhavan we had a live 4g 5g enterprise private enterprise network solution mm -hmm. and uh, that we had showcased and the honorable minister also had seen that and he had not anticipated that this type of changes can take place okay. and as a result of that you see there is a uh, as for the government decisions are concerned on private enterprise networks so that is taking place okay. and we have seen that even the entry of players like adani 
into the telecom uh, sector for the private enterprise so, networks. So, so that that explains, you know, the, the the focus on innovation there. Yes, we are going to see India Mobile Congress is taking place on first of uh, uh, October. Mm -hmm. Possibly, you may be finding that uh, Honorable Prime Minister may be visiting uh, the uh, consortium pavilion, where 23 small companies they will be having a uh, stitched a 5G network. And within that network, uh, within that consortium hall, you will see that end-to-end -end solution co covering the railways, okay. covering the there'll army. Be, there'll, be, there'll, be, there'll, be, there'll be interesting. And, you know, uh, that is something which we are talking about here, yeah. looking towards the future and a future at Eloy as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Bhatnagar, uh, Mr. Jitain Jain, as well as uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Sandeep Agarwal for your views and insight as well. As our experts were pointing out, uh, very clearly, there are uh, some very interesting aspects of uh, this uh, draft Indian uh, telecommunication bill, uh, which has been put in public domain uh, for suggestions. Uh, and the focus is on not only making the law, the regulations future ready, but also giving a lot of fillip to innovation, to R&D, to put in an enabling mechanism for the consumers and the service providers both here. We'll keep a close watch on all the developments here in telecom sector and several other aspects and topics as well. Come back again. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.